With the release of Unreal Engine 5 beta, lots of you guys have been hard at work pushing the new engine to its absolute limits. While the engine has only been out for a few months, we already have several jaw-dropping demos and environments to take a look at. So let's explore 10 of the best fan-made demos made with Unreal Engine 5. So while we're on the topic of Unreal Engine, if you want to learn how to create beautiful environments in Unreal, check out my brand new environment art course called the Environment Artist Survival Kit, where you're going to learn everything from making flowing grass to fluffy trees and sweeping landscapes. All 13 hours of content are only $49 forever. And you can also get a discount on the 3D coloring book as a bonus as well. So if you've been waiting to get it, now is your chance. I'll leave a link in the description for the course. First up at number 10, Rubes making the legendary Rust map from Call of Duty shows just how far we've come with modern technology and how easy it's become to recreate your favorite games in AAA quality. Rubes starts by importing the base map as a foundation for the level and then carefully and skillfully replaces the textures on the assets using the built-in Quixel Bridge library. Gone are the days of having a separate application to add assets and models. In Unreal Engine 5's viewport, you can simply click the bridge button from the content drop-down menu and pick and choose assets and textures to import into your level. And to top it all off, he adds dust particles, really showing how atmospherics have come a long way in games today compared to games 10 years ago. Fans of the Elder Scrolls series like me are sure to have plenty to crave in anticipation for Elder Scrolls 6 after watching this video. Next up at number 9 is Hall 00117's Skyrim in Unreal Engine 5 Western Watchtower scene. This scene is an absolute beauty. This beautiful environment utilizes nanite geometry to create hyper-realistic details. To create the stone walls, Hall used displacement maps on primitive objects in Blender to push out the geometry, then imported this as a super dense mesh. Now, this could be seen as a huge benefit to people who aren't material artists that can't craft a stone wall in, say, Substance Designer, for instance. The tower itself is around 11 million polygons, while the other objects are also in the millions. Never before have you been able to import this amount of geometry until now. I mean, just look at the fidelity of the terrain and the tiny rocks and debris. It adds so much believability to this environment. We wish there was almost more to see in this scene. And if this scene wasn't impressive enough, it's also running at 60 to 70 frames a second. It's insane. Chris G, the creator of this environment, provides a quick breakdown on his art station, so I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in learning more about this fantastic scene. Coming at number 8 is Joe Garth's incredible physics demo, showcasing plenty of crunchy terrain destruction. This one will really blow your mind. Joe uses a third party tool called Voxel plugin to chip away at the ground around him. Voxelation allows Joe to create overhangs in the scene, and having the capabilities of Nanite helps keep everything super performance optimized. Just look at him tunneling his way through the earth exactly how you would in Minecraft, only this time it's in AAA realism using completely scanned assets. It's crazy. It's truly amazing seeing meteors fall from the sky creating realistic craters right in front of your eyes. In this video, Joe is also using Nanite to improve performance despite having some geometry and higher fidelity. You can see this in the background mountains which are using the high polygon version. Another Unreal Engine 5 exclusive feature being used here is Lumen. Basically, with Lumen, global illumination is computed in runtime. Notice how the light rays coming from the directional light bounce off the red cube and reflect perfectly along the landscape nearby. Having this kind of interactive lighting allows the artist to get accurate dynamic lighting without having to use fake bounce lights everywhere in your scene. Next up at number 7 is Melhem's amazing Roman temple scene. Right off the bat, the first thing that jumps out at you is the detail that can be utilized in Unreal Engine 5 now. Melhem imported mega scans for the floor and wood chips, leveraging new technology to push the realism in the scene. Importing displacement maps and enabling them in the engine is a deprecated workflow in Unreal Engine 5 Early Access, but you can use it on a landscape material should you choose to make one. As the camera pans up, we are left with a breathtaking view of the sheer scale and detail now possible in real time. From the high poly ornate geometry of the columns to the beautiful statue of Poseidon, Nanite has done it again. Just look at the bumps and divots on the surface of the statue. As time progresses, we're definitely going to see some of the workflow seen in VFX film and cinematics merge with the game industry. I am super excited where the next few years of technology and games is going to take us. 
At number six, we get a taste of the birch forest biome environment created by Willie Hams, also known as Maui, an amazing artist who specializes in creating photorealistic forests and other organic Unreal Engine environments. In this video, Maui converts a pre-existing scene originally created in UE4 into Unreal Engine 5 while adding Lumen and Nanite. Another cool aspect of Unreal Engine 5 we get to see in action is virtual shadow maps. These shadow maps are high resolution maps that allow each mesh to cast its own accurate shadow. Past methods in Unreal Engine 4 were based on a technique called percentage closer filtering, which would over blur and reduce the visual impact of high resolution geometry and shadows. Notice the shadows of the individual leaves from the tree canopy. Despite all of this dynamic global illumination lighting and shadow resolution, the scene runs very smooth. And just for some background information, Maui is running the scene on an RTX 2080 at 30 FPS. It is crazy to think this is still in early access. I can't imagine how powerful this will become in the near future. Next up at number five, let's switch gears for a second and see how Unreal Engine 5 is being leveraged towards the ArcViz community. In this video, artist and YouTuber JS Films shows off a scene created by DViz. Using Unreal Engine for ArcViz purposes isn't anything new, but it still isn't the industry standard due to pre-renderers like V-Ray and Corona giving marginally better results when done correctly. However, the benefits of real-time for ArcViz are obvious, clearly. You can iterate faster for your client, you can walk around in 3D space like a video game, it's completely interactive, and VR headsets are now even used for virtual tours of buildings that are yet to be constructed. They don't even exist yet. And now, with Unreal Engine 5's Lumen and Nanite features, you'd be hard-pressed to see a big difference in a side-by-side -side comparison. Just take a second and check out the physics of these curtains, along with the folds and wrinkles in the bedsheet, and just take a look at how detailed the shadows on these meshes appear. As we can see here, where Lumen really shines is interiors. While there's still a few quirks to work out with it, it's truly beautiful in this early stage release. Coming in at number four is a neat little side-by-side -side comparison between the same scene in Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5. The video starts off in UE4 before it transitions to UE5. At first, you may notice not that big of a difference with the opening exterior shot. Where you really see the effects of Lumen is in the interior shot. Just look at the detailed shadow maps. When compared to the Unreal Engine 4 scene, it looks washed out, but the level of crispness and contrast between light and shadows in Unreal Engine 5 is truly staggering. In this shot, we can see just how the new virtual shadow map feature can enhance your foliage. Shadows actually play a huge role in how we perceive information in games. Without having the right contrast between light and shadows, environments can become flat looking. Here's another beautiful example of interior bounce lighting. And number three probably looks very similar to the Unreal Engine 5 debut demo that you saw, but instead of a fictional Valley of the Ancients, we are transported to a fantastic representation of Petra. I know I sound like a broken record, but I cannot get over these shadows. They look so good. Notice how there's still plenty of information and readability in the shadows. You really wanna be able to see details in shadows, especially when you're playing video games. And at closer inspection, there also seems to be accurate color information in the shadows, which is how real life shadows actually behave. Shadows are never a pure black because there's always light bouncing off objects into other objects. Turning off the Lumen GI, we see just what kind of impact the default setting has on the scene. As we make our way inside, the interior global illumination steals the show again. For those of us who aren't lighting artists, this evolution in Unreal Engine will make lighting your scenes much less painful. At number two, the Dev Squad YouTube channel created a great short tutorial on how to use Lumen in your scene, taking you through the initial setup. Since it's not inherently obvious what settings need to be enabled for it to work properly and optimally. To do this, simply make sure Lumen is active in Global Illumination and Reflection setting under the Rendering tab, and the Lumen tab has Global Tracing active. You're also going to need to enable Generate Mesh Distance Fields. Lastly, you need to enable Lumen in your post process volume, which DevSquad walks you through. One of the main reasons I had to put this in our top 10 is because DevSquad goes into some aspects of Lumen that I haven't really seen yet, in particular using emissive materials to light your scene dynamically, and explaining how materials can be used as a light source in Unreal Engine 5. 
Instead of just having to add a point light to enhance emissive lighting like we all normally do, it's derived directly from the material itself. Another great thing they go over is the indirect lighting setting. You can just adjust in your light source menu. This is really going to help push the information readability of the shadows like we discussed earlier. It's just another great feature to have when you're using Lumen. And last but not least is number one, the latest tech demo showcasing Unreal Engine 5's potential dropped last week from AAA Studio, The Coalition. If you weren't aware, a few select studios from around the globe had been given early access to Unreal Engine 5 before its release to the public to test it out and eventually showcase how it can be leveraged in a game studio. Entitled Alpha Point, the scene is absolutely remarkable, showing just how Unreal Engine 5, in all of its glory, can be utilized in a production setting. The best part of all of this is that it's not just a trailer. The amazing folks at Coalition gave an hour-long talk on the making of Alpha Point at GDC 2021. If there's one thing to take away from this breakdown video, it's how you can create environments with Unreal Engine 5's Nanite and Lumen the way a high-caliber AAA studio would. And on top of all of this, the demo is tested on an Xbox Series X and S to evaluate performance. This is our first look as to how this engine can make games for current gen consoles. I really highly recommend that you guys check this video out. I hope you found this informative and learned a little bit about how people are using Unreal Engine 5 to raise the bar in their environment art. If you guys enjoyed the video and want to support us, feel free to check us out on Patreon. As usual, I'm Thomas from Stylized Station, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.